The greatest danger in times of turbulence is not the turbulence. It is to act with yesterday logic. If you have heard of this quote by one of the influential thinkers in management, Peter Drucker, you realize that change is inevitable because the world is constantly evolving. The same goes to digital transformation. When organizations implement changes as part of their digital transformation efforts, they found that employees are often resistant to change. According to McKinsey's study, 70% of the digital transformation fail, most often due to resistance from the employees. And let's say if you are the CEO of the company, and maybe one day you decided to implement technology to transform some of your business operations. And you gather all your department heads and make a formal announcement saying that, all right, team, we are going through a digital transformation to redefine our processes in the next few months. So please be prepared and share it with your team. You see, when you make this announcement, there may be some of your employees looking at you blankly and thinking, nothing has gone wrong. What? Why do I need to change? What if the changes affects our operation and customers? Do I need to learn a new software again? You see, all these questions are signs of resistance and you may not be aware as a CEO. So why do your employees react in this way? Now, the reason why I'm telling you this is because when it comes to implementing digital transformation, not many people are adaptable to change. In fact, digital transformation is easy. Human transformation is hard. That's why I'm going to share with you a five-step process to communicate with your employees before implementing any changes in the organization so that you can reduce their resistance to change. Step number one is to communicate the purpose of change. Employees need to know why organization needs to change. What is the organization vision that could look like in the next few years? Is your organization working towards the right direction? By communicating the purpose of change, you make them realize that why they need to change as well in order to align with your organization objectives. Step number two is to communicate the importance of change. That means as an employee, what's in it for me? What are the values that are important to me? And why should I change? Having said that, you may consider having a one-to-one -one conversation to find out from your employees what are the values that are important to them. How does this change impact their work performance? And will this change make their life easier? By giving them a reason why they need to change, they'll be more receptive to start changing their new behaviors. Step number three is to assess their readiness for change. Are your employees ready to change or do they have the right mindset to start implementing the changes? Because as employees, they may be used to getting their own ways of doing things. So that's why when you start to implement changes, they may feel defensive and in the end, they procrastinate. So by assessing their readiness for change, it helps you to identify which groups of employees are ready to change. Step number four is to assess their willingness to change. Are your employees motivated to change or do they have the passion to start implementing the changes? That means you may consider to find out what actually motivates your employees to change. Do you need to start creating an inclusive and supportive environment to cultivate their change? Step number five is to assess their capacity for change. Do your employees have the right knowledge, skill sets or ability to start implementing these changes? If they don't, it is time to upskill the workforce so that they will be more prepared to keep up with the demands. That's why I believe that it is important to have a supportive culture to start cultivating change in an organization since day one. It is like a bridge over troubled waters. A supportive culture acts as a sturdy bridge to help employees navigate challenging transitions and provide a smooth path to the other side of the change. So those are the five steps to assess and communicate to your employees when it comes to implementing digital transformation for your organization. If you want to know how to start cultivating change in your organization, I put out a video here which talks about a methodology that I use to explain the entire cycle of change. So go ahead and watch it. I hope you find this video useful and if you want to watch my other videos, don't forget to click on the subscribe button below and turn on the notification bell so that you can receive my video updates weekly. And also let me know in the comment section below, what would you do to start implementing change for your organization? All right, that's all for now and I'll see you in my next video.